<clears throat> so I really wanted to call this video in defense of Gears of War 2 because I feel this game has been getting a lot of undeserved hate nowadays, mostly from people revisiting this game and finding it a lot clunkier, slower, and generally more unplayable than they remember. I'm fucking shooting you! With comments such as, I can't believe I used to play this game, and this game is so slow, Gears of War 3 once again being remembered as the best of the original 3, and Gears 1 and 2 being thrown in the garbage bin. The first point I want to make is playing Gears of War 2 in 2022 is not reflective of what the game used to be back in the day, when the game was active with thousands of players online. The game nowadays consists of one playlist being active and most of the few players that still play being from Mexico. Dude, look at the freaking- oh my god, I'm scared now. All of them with the freaking Mexico emblem. Not to disrespect Mexico or Mexican players, me being Mexican myself, but the connection is usually not the best. 9 times out of 10, the game favors the players from Mexico while you proceed to get completely shat on. He side rolled and bodied me. The game just wasn't made for these kinds of connections, and judging the game nowadays based off of these conditions just isn't fair to the game. The next point I wanted to tackle is the movement. Wait, what the fuck am I watching? Gears 2 does have the slowest movement out of all of the games in the series. The roadie run, the walking speed, and the strafing speed were all downgraded from Gears 1, but Epic Games implemented significant changes that gave the movement a lot more depth and skill. In Gears 1, the fastest way to get around the map was the roadie run. Sliding to cover and wall bouncing off of things in the environment didn't really give you much of a speed boost. If anything, they were riskier to do, and getting stuck to walls was very common. Gee, thanks, Gears 1! The fastest way to get around the map was just to roadie run. However, in Gears 2, they implemented wall cancelling, which allows you to cancel the animation of jumping to cover. This, combined with the speed boost the animation of going to cover gives you, allows you to wall cancel while wall bouncing around your environment, giving you a huge edge on speed while traversing the map. Though the movement is slower, the combination of rolling, wall cancelling, and roadie running allowed you to truly move faster and more efficient around the environment. And if you were to master the movement, you can literally do whatever you want. You can move just as smoothly as you can in Gears 5 and feel like a straight up gangster while doing it. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. A real gangster ass nigga plays his cards right. A real gangster ass nigga never runs his fucking mouth because real gangster ass niggas don't start fights. He can shine like I'm leaking like a tank, laughing my way to the bank. In fact, I'm trying to kick it like a hacky sack. I'm trying to kick my old habits, they keep coming back. I'm trying to chase my own rabbit to the aftermath. Take a step, please. Slash like a jet ski. Surf with no water in the desert. Yes, I met these similar. The movement is smooth and skillful without being incredibly easy to pull off, making it satisfying for those that put in the time. In Gears 3 and onwards, the movement became a lot faster and fluid, so wall, so wall bouncing maneuvering became pretty annoying and overly abused. The third point I wanted to illustrate is the weapon balancing. Next to Gears 4, I think Gears 2 has the best weapon balancing in the series. For starters, the Lancer does down you quicker than the Gears 1 Lancer, but they decrease the projectile speed, making it so that you have to lead your shots a little bit when shooting, which requires more skill when shooting at a moving target. It's no longer the laser beam that it was in Gears 1. Woo! The Hammer Burst is the first time we've seen a semi-automatic rifle in a Gears of War game. This gun is pretty powerful, but it has a trade-off for how much recoil it has, so it's not the easiest gun to pick up and use. The snub pistol was nerfed, making it more of a handy sidearm when you're out of ammo, instead of the Desert Eagle Glock it was in Gears 1. Wow. The long shot no longer downs you with one active reload shot like it did in Gears 1, making the emphasis on getting headshots much more important and meaningful in Gears 2. The power weapons for the most part stay relatively the same. Power weapons of course will always be power weapons and they force players to move around the map so you can't complain too much. And last but not least, the Nasher. This gun has seen several revisions throughout Gears of War 2's title updates. The title updates were a series of patches for Gears of War 2 that tried to fine tune the weapon balancing and mechanics of the game. When hopping on Gears 2 for the first time, lots of players make the mistake of trying to use the Nasher like it's the Gears 3 Nasher, pop shotting, hip firing, and hard aiming like the sweaty Giga Chats they are. 
without realizing all of these values function different in Gears 2. As of 2010, the last title update Gears of War 2 received was Title Update 6, in which the Nasher received some significant buffs and changes, making it function way differently than any other Nasher in a Gears of War game. The blind fire no longer comes out of the center of your screen like in Gears 1. But now comes out of the barrel at a very strange off to the side angle, making strafing hip firing battles a lot harder to do than the first and the third game. Pop shotting doesn't do nearly as much damage as it does in Gears 1 or 3, while hard aiming on the other hand does a monster amount of damage, making it a freaking sniper shotgun as some people have called it. Now, this is to all the people that said Gears 2 takes the most skill. Look at him, he's hard aiming his shotgun across the map. It's basically a tactical nuke. Oh my god! This is why you will always see a good player hard aiming every shot he takes. This split a lot of players in the community, some liking the change while others hating it. This makes Gears 2 the oddball of the original trilogy, where gameplay staples of the shotgun like pop shotting and blind firing are so disincentivized in the Nasher meta. This is why a lot of players can never get into Gears 2. Take this move, man. Either they simply didn't know how the shotgun actually functioned, or they did know but just preferred the way the Gears 1 and 3 shotgun functioned better. I personally feel once you understand how the shotgun works and you begin to get a feel for it, the game can become so much more enjoyable. It took a while to get used to, but now I freaking love it. It just feels so satisfying when you're being pushed by two enemy players and being able to pull off a risky hard aim that allows you to secure both kills. While bouncing around the map for your advantage of course, pulling yourself back, censoring your aim, and landing some powerful consecutive shots down both players and move in for the kill. Making the shotgun and wall bounce around the map combo just absolutely killer. Which brings me to my next point, the maps. The maps that Gears 2 ship with are pretty great. You get classics like Security, Jacinto, Pavilion, Blood Drive, Avalanche. And while I do think that the 10 base maps in Gears 1 are a little bit better than the 10 base maps that Gears 2 ship with, Gears 2 just hands down takes the cake here by having the most DLC map packs out of any other game in the series. A total of 6 map packs which included a grand total of 19 additional maps, making the total maps of the game a whopping 29 maps. That's almost twice as many maps in Gears 1. And you have so many freaking awesome maps to choose from here. Mansion, War Machine, Way Station, Underhill, Sanctuary, Pavilion, All Father's Garden, Security, Courtyard, Subway, Fuel Station, Fuel Depot, Highway, Nowhere, Blood Drive, Memorial, Canals, Tyro Station, Avalanche, River, Flood, Gridlock, the list goes on and on. Some maps are pretty weak, like Stasis and Ruins. None of the maps are bad, and you just have so much variety in maps to pick from. There truly is a map for every game mode and playstyle. This game just has so much freaking content. Epic Games went all out with the DLC. Not even Gears 4 or 5 can come close to the level of content that 2 had. And I think it's worth commending. These maps were just so unique and well made. It isn't just nostalgia, these maps are genuinely well designed. They just don't make maps like they used to anymore. The coalitions simply aren't as talented as Epic when they were in their prime. I could talk about other things like the horde mode, the multiplayer playlist, the gore, the voice chat, other stuff. But with the Gears of War collection reportedly being leaked, I just wanted to make this video just shedding some light on Gears 2 and its mechanics. Just so when the game drops, people don't instantly dismiss it. And I hope people give it a fair chance before, you know, they go back to Gears 5, which apparently they hate so much. So yeah, thanks for watching, and if you want to play some Gears 2 or Gears 1 matches, join my Discord server. That's it for now. Final relocation, now I picked up my creation It's got my spirit racing, I can feel it, my vibration My mind is overtaken by like all the things I'm saying, uh Take it to the head, my nigga, that's my occupation, uh Take it to the head, take it to the head No fear, no pain, no death, I can feel it in my chest, uh Rock it for my people living in the Southwest And my people living in the spirit, yes, we so blessed And you know it's no stress, uh